Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of the Trucking Tower Podcast with Mr. Michael Vincent. We're doing a top 10 show today. You ready for this, Michael? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm very, as you see, I brought up my Christmas jazz hands for you. Christmas jazz hands. I love it. Right You've always got these amazing intros. <laughs> yeah, they're they're epic. I do all my own stunts, too. It's amazing. That is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I figured you use a, a stunt double. No, no, it's all me. It's all me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're going to do this Christmas special today. It's got a top 10 favorite moments of from this year of podcasting. It's hard to believe we did 35 episodes this year. I, I know, you know, I, I was going through some of the episodes and I was like, wow, that was from like last winter. I'm like, for real? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. But, you know, I have a lot of fun doing these sustainability shows with you and we're working together on fuel reduction, emissions yeah. reduction, plastics waste reduction, saving companies money, um, helping them get more business. Uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun, and I I love the fact that our our you know our vision and and our ethos and everything are aligned. And you know the mission is really to do this, but to make touching lives in a positive way and positive impact throughout the world a sustainable mission that we can we can do. And Absolutely, that's, that's really the end goal, right? Absolutely. Helping companies, helping the environment and helping people. Also, we do, we do these things with giving and we're going to get into that here in a second. But, right on. you know, you were telling me and showing me uh, you were in the Nutcracker Ballet with your family, right? Yes, right. it's my way of giving back to people. Right. There you go. It's to perform in, in the Nutcracker Ballet. Yes. I, yeah. The Chattanooga um, Dance Theater. Uh, does the Nuga Nutcracker every year, um, and it, and it's a full blown production. You know, it's the Nutcracker, it's the ballet, with a little twist of Chattanooga, right? So you know, the University of Tennessee Chattanooga UTC football team and and basketball, they're the they're the mocks or the mockingbirds. So instead of you know the little soldiers fighting the the mouse queen, they're little baby mockingbirds fighting them and stuff like that right and the different lands have to do with the different areas of chattanooga right like the river and the mountains and and so on very yeah. cool and, and you didn't have to wear tights right they wouldn't let me they wouldn't let you <laughs> yeah no. yeah no no tights my, my <laughs> wife <laughs> so both my daughters are in it so last year my daughter was uh, a baby mockingbird and then this year she moved in to be a gnome and my other daughter is younger daughter is now a mockingbird last year my wife and i became we were party parents you know at the beginning of the nutcracker they come across a stage with the girls and they walk and come to the house and they do the waltz and all that kind of stuff um so we did have to dance but like the waltz not you know, with toe shoes or anything. <laughs> and then, uh, so, and then this year we, we were um, actually Clara's parents. So we were the main uh, party guests, if you will. We, it was our, we were throwing the party that it all happens. And then uh, my wife's uh, uh, mother and father uh, were, our mother and stepfather were the, uh, were other party parents. So it was a whole family. It was uh uh, grandparents, parents, and and kids all in the all in the nutcracker. <laughs> that is so cool. I and, love you know, it's and... fun. It's fun. It's fun. I mean that the the performance weekend is rough. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four shows. So I mean it's you know it's a few hours long. So it it's it's a bit of a commitment. But um, yeah, it's great. It's a lot of fun. Well, and you made lasting memories with the, your family and oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, you'll we'll, never... do it. we'll do it next year we'll do it every year until the girls stop dancing so i mean my girls are actually dancing ballet my wife and i not so much <laughs> right yeah i wouldn't attempt that anymore i would no, break something no, for sure no, no, no. i yeah. haven't danced ballet since football they used to make us we used to uh, study ballet for balance and moves and stuff like that during in football. So, well, Not I had to do jazzercise one summer, which was interesting on a soccer team. And that was, we were like, what are we doing here? What are we, yeah, what? you know, see, I can see you getting into it with like <laughs> spandex and, and all kinds of stuff. Dude. Headband. <laughs> yeah, total. <laughs> I see you as a total eighties with Olivia Newton, John doing the whole, you know, let's get physical. <laughs> no. We were all so awkward. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah no kidding yeah <laughs> right but yeah, there was 
There was nothing graceful about our football ballet classes. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, you know, we have a very special partner, you know, Compassion International. I'm going to actually show my screen here. Oh, please do. Yes. You know, we've been involved with this organization for quite some years now. And my wife, Julie, and I, as you know, went to Ecuador to visit a young lady and her mom that we had sponsored for 11 years, heard their story. We had we became like family, right? We're talking back and forth, sharing pictures. They ask, what is Christmas like where you live? We ask, how's it going with school? And and so forth, right? So we did that. And then we learned about, you know, what happens on the ground. It's absolutely incredible. And then we were really fortunate to open a facility in Ghana alongside Compassion. And uh, we're just carrying on through. We want to do a whole lot more, but there's a giving opportunity. So if anybody's looking for a way to really impact not only the child, but the family and the community, I can vouch for Compassion International, and we don't get any money from this. It's just straight to Compassion to make impacts on the ground. You can sponsor a child. You can do back and forth letters, and literally, it's more of a blessing to you. It's the craziest thing, right? It's no, and and I can vouch for that, man. I mean, when you start getting into this, that is a hundred percent truth. It is such a blessing, and it comes back to you tenfold. It does. Absolutely. You know, so we've been super blessed by that whole relationship across a quite a few years. And, you know, so that's our, you can click and sponsor a child or click and donate a one-time gift. And it's unbelievable. I'll just give you an example. One year we decided to do a Christmas gift for this family. They opened a convenience store with it. Now oh, wow. we're not talking about a 7-Eleven size convenience. So we're talking about a small store with gum and milk and so forth, but literally uh, impacted the whole community. I couldn't rent one eighth of a 7-Eleven for what this was, right? But they could, and they could use it to make a living and help the community at the same time. That is the kind of thing your money can literally change a family. I mean, it's incredible. So anyway, it 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 really is, you know, and we gave, and, you know, you could build an entire house for a family. I mean, for like $5,000. Right. And it, I mean, and they've, and it's theirs. It's, you know, it, it, it's amazing how far your money goes and the impact is unbelievable. It truly I mean, is. I was, I was talking to a good friend of both of ours uh, this morning, uh, railroad sensei, Brian Schnedler. Yes. And we were just talking about how there's somebody out there praying for you to keep moving forward an inch every day. And and be that blessing to them, and there it is. I mean, this this is how it works. So absolutely, it's an incredible to see the impacts. You know, we saw the child development centers, the homes, talk to the people on the ground. It was just really impactful. I mean, yeah. very very impactful to see it firsthand like that. And uh, so we're just trying to carry on. We have a goal of helping thousands and then millions of people, and I truly think we can do it. And Amen. That's I'm where with we're it. headed. That's where we're yes, headed. We will. We will do it. No doubt about it. No doubt. Absolutely. About it. That's how you so, and I got together was 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 trying to fund that. <laughs> we did. Yeah. You and I uh, did a couple of things together um, in years, well, probably two years ago or so. Yeah. Well, it was uh, trying we, to do it through through OPT to get the machines and stuff like that, because that's what's going on there is, we're, you know, OPT, our, 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 our branch in Af- South Africa puts people in business. Right. That's what the machines do. You support one of these machines. The machine goes out there and we create zero money down entrepreneurs who then each machine out there in is is making between 50 and 100 jobs. Because now you've got people that are collecting plastics and coming in and earning money to feed their families with that money. Right. Right. Uh, And and, and that's that. And it builds these communities and teaches the future, uh, you know, stewards of our planet as you know, we've been taught as we are the stewards um, and teaches them how to do it the right thing. And it turns waste uh, in, into into business, which is what we got to think about, right? For circularity. So Absolutely. I love it all. That's a, a unbelievable impact uh, on the community, on the families, on waste. Uh, it's just impactful all the way around. So, Michael, you and I put together this top 10 moments from the year. 
on yeah, our okay. Podcast. So I, I I picked number one, and I think you agreed with me with number one is, but the rest of them I I think you you selected in the order, or or maybe you threw them up in the air. I don't. I, they were all my favorites. I couldn't pick. That's why I just. I know them. I had a really really hard time with this, and we didn't have but, time to get an accountant or anybody to count votes or anything like that. Or, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> no, um, all of them were you know could have been n- number one or number two, whatever. But yeah, we picked ten. Out of 35 shows, and we're going to start with this one right here. So, again, I need to share my screen. Let me uh, get the right happen, screen dude. Share with the people. in place. We're all about sharing. Yes, we are. Let me get the right screen at the right spot and full screen it. We need there a producer. <laughs> I need a producer. Yes. Okay, here we go. Number 10. Oil does not come from dinosaurs. What do you think about when you think about fossils? Dinosaurs, right? Of Of course. Who doesn't think that's a dinosaur? No, you're not pumping velociraptor juice into your Volvo. That oil and that gas, which I'm just going to show a picture up here, that oil and that gas is actually from trillions of algae and plankton. So that's been a scam that's been perpetuated on me since birth. In the movie Cars, didn't lightning drive for like Dino Fuel or whatever? Dino Fuel, that's right. <laughs> that was number ten. I, I'm telling you, that's. Um, I feel I feel, I feel I've duped. I've been duped. I have too, man. All the <laughs> way through elementary school. All the, in fact, you know, you drive down the road and the gas station. I think it's Sinclair has a dinosaur in the front. So I feel like I've been scammed my whole life about that particular yeah. right there. A- a- absolutely. Absolutely. There, there, we, there, we need an investigation. We do. Absolutely. <laughs> we absolutely do. We're going to start a commission of our own. <laughs> I bet there's a lot of people going, what? It's not dinosaurs. I bet there's a lot of people saying that. What in the world are you talking about? Yeah, no, one dinosaurs, oh, not well. dinosaurs. <laughs> there might be a two. There might be one or two that floated and fell to the bottom of the the, the old seas and oceans that became it. But that's where it came from. It's not from the land fossils. <laughs> oh man, I I honestly didn't know until we did that show. I really did not even know that was. I true. think I think it's further evidence that the uh, Middle East was an ocean at one time. Yeah, I bet you. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Good money bet on that one right there. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So number nine, you ready for number nine? I am ready, baby. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a hypothetical question, Mike. All right. Lay on me. If I sent a spy balloon across your property to collect images and perhaps backdoor some data, troll around, would it make you more or less comfortable doing business together? Mm. It depends on how you reacted to the uh, information that you gathered. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so, you know, it's not the act of taking data and pictures. It's what would you do with that? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was, the, I was trying to be politically correct about, you know, it depends on what you actually saw me doing and if you could forgive me for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. You know, oh. it, the knowledge that you gain might be much more valuable than, you know, actually doing business with me. You never know. <laughs> yes, maybe like blackmail. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I could maybe leverage you for some things. Yeah, you definitely have the upper hand in negotiations <laughs> after that. Happens. Oh man. Well, you know, we uh we have a privacy fence in the back, and I'm thankful that uh we don't have drones flying around everywhere because I would not want anybody to see that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm not sure they would. <laughs> right. <laughs> it would probably fall out of the sky for one. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh, Unbelievable. That is well, funny. That was a fun show. Yeah. 
Well, I yeah. remember the Chinese spy balloons that were in the news and man, um, that was in the news for weeks and weeks on end and uh, what they were doing, why they were doing it. We, I never really feel like I got the full story on that, but uh, they were definitely doing it. But well, yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing was, I mean, it, I think we discovered or we discussed in that, that it didn't matter because both sides of the argument actually won out of that. Right. <laughs> All right. One said they blew it up and they they figured it out, and the other said no, we didn't do it, and accused the West. You know, so I mean, both won in their own little regions with their political uh, spin on whatever it was that they occurred. All, they both spun it for their own people, and they were like, eh, "Okay, that's all." Yeah. Right. What, what I never understood is, you know, a country that puts, you know, literally thousands of satellites in the air and can spy on everybody, just like we can would trust their, you know, data gathering intelligence to a balloon that's just kind of floating on the jet stream, <laughs> you know, getting random stuff. It's not like you, you can't control that balloon and make sure it hits a specific place, right? <laughs> <It's a balloon. laughs> that is very interesting. No doubt about it. No, no, no. There's, there's more to that story. There is more yeah, to that yeah, story. Yeah, absolutely. Oh All right. So you ready for the next one? I am. Here we go. We're not oh, no. turning off the valve of fossil-based fuels tomorrow. It's not no, right. petrochemicals are used in everything. We've talked about this. Jackets, cell phones, yeah. car bumpers. I mean, yeah. just, just the, the, the petrochemicals industry, if it were to go away, would be, uh, you talk about a disruption, <laughs> it would be a total disruption of supply chains everywhere. So yeah, 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 no, it certainly would. <laughs> it turned the earth into one big naked and afraid show. <laughs> I'm doing great, man. I'm all hyped up. I just uh, I went for a run, uh, took a shower, and and got all cleaned up. I even used deodorant for you folks today. So if you smell something, it ain't me. It's stench free. It's damn stitch ring. <laughs> exactly. Very good. Very good. So you know that you have the noble logistics stitch free zone. That uh, uh, yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, so that's true. I had to bring it into a show, man. I had to bring it in somehow, some way. <laughs> well, you, you, you know it's it's kind of a big thing here in tennessee when you do actually bathe so i had to announce it to <laughs> oh yeah i do it at least twice a year it, whether you need it or not right whether i need it or not i highly recommend it <laughs> oh man did your mom ever ask you clean behind your ears oh of course yes yeah i always, I always wondered what is back there you know <laughs> I can't see it. I don't know what's back there. Yeah, that was the point is you clean where you can't even see, right? right. <laughs> so, yeah, was, but you're right. As a kid, you're like, what is, I don't know. Guy, well, why yeah, are the back of my ears particularly? Do? <laughs> I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. There's nothing on. I took a tissue out. I'm like, uh, I don't get it. Why wash behind my ears is like so important. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, when I was a kid, it was pretty important. I mean, we 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 played a lot uh, in the swamps and and forests and stuff all summer and winter. Actually, and so we, got, <laughs> we got pretty dirty. We got pretty dirty. We oh pretty yeah, dirty. we did too. We were always outside playing. Always. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Free range parenting. That's Back right. Absolutely. Day. Doesn't right. go anymore. <laughs> you ready for the next one? I am always ready, man. Lay it on me. Here we go. But it starts with the Neanderthals. I want to, which is crazy, right? I looked up. I just said, you know, how long have we been sailing? Because I don't know. Do you know off the top of your head how long people have been sailing? No, no. First thing that comes up is is fizz.org that says, hey, the, these these guys have been you know Neanderthals. There's evidence that Neanderthals were sailing fifty thousand years before modern man built the first boat. What a thought. Right? That's crazy, isn't it? It is. I had no idea. And then we we talked about on that show, there's modern maritime vessels that are starting to use sails. Yeah, exactly. It was the, yeah, I mean, we full circle, right? Hey, we got a new technology, sails. Well, right. um, okay. So Neanderthals been, did it like 52,000 years ago or something. Like that. <laughs> it's not I mean, new. 
<laughs> yeah, this is not a new technology, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, but that- some of those sales are really cool and they're not what you expect they are. So, I mean, checking those things out are really neat. Some of them are that, and I forget what the physics uh, 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 property is or, or law is that it utilizes, but they spin in the wind, which creates uplift, which create, listen, lessens the drag on the ship, right? So it's not actually like a sail that catches wind necessarily. Now, there are some that do that. They call them wind wings or whatever they are. But there are others that do this spinning type of thing that, anyways, check them out. There's a lot of cool. Cargill's doing this and and Maersk and a bunch of others are doing these these new sailing ships. Very cool technology. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, I watched a documentary one time about the Polynesian Islands and the Hawaiian Islands and how in the world those very first explorers took that journey like hundreds of miles across the water, like uh that right was, in, in the outrigger canoes yeah in outriggers yeah yeah i mean they weren't even the viking ships and when you see what the actual viking ships look like you're like what huh i wouldn't take that across lake chickamauga even those weren't like ships <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean right. i wouldn't take one of those out on lake you follow where i would grow up fishing there's no <laughs> way i'd go out on an ocean with one that, yeah those uh, this those people uh they had some cojones. <laughs> they were very, very that? brave. Much braver yes. than I, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's where the, fra- you know, uh, brave. there's a thin line between bravery and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that was, uh, that was a fun show, too. So I'm going to go cue up the next one here. Right on. Oh, yeah. According to Ryan Brook, who leads the University of Saskatchewan's Canadian Wild Pig Research Project. Yeah, I know you were you were asking me just the other day who leads that, that research project. Right. Now that I'm glad you brought that into the show. Yep. Yeah, it's Ryan, it's Ryan Brook, anybody who was wondering that. Quote, wild pigs are easily the worst invasive large mammal on the planet. Who the thunk? Invasive super pigs. That is a scary thought. What we were talking about is like they're in Saskatchewan and they're coming across the border into the U.S. It's like the killer bees. Remember the Africanized bees or whatever they're called coming up from Mexico. We're going to kill us all. Now we got pigs. Right now. Yeah, absolutely. And they they they're super pigs because they can withstand the extreme cold. Yeah. The extreme heat. They can root around and destroy everything if you know. And there's it's almost like there's no stopping them, you know. No, I, I, listen, I, we talked about it on the show. I had a couple pigs, small yeah. ones, like 30 pounders. You can't stop a pig. <laughs> you can't. It's and they're very mus- smart. They're, they're very smart. They're very stubborn. They're a solid piece of muscle. And and they're wrapped in about an inch thick hide. <laughs> and they're not, you, can't, you can't hurt them. And they just, yeah, it's not. But yeah, right. And DeSoto, remember, we, I mean, DeSoto brought over the first pigs to the U.S., right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, queuing up the next one here. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm about fighting for a relationship that 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 knows to be need to be fought, fought for. Right, right. And so I was like, this now this is the one you keep it when it's down for life. So that actually started this uh, this record off, and it gave me the inspiration to go ahead and keep writing uh more. So you can see the different types. Oh my, that was a fun show. Both of us have had Damon Day on our shows, and he is so talented as a musician. Incredible. He he really is. And, and you know what? There was so much in that show that could have made there could be like four of the top ten come out of that show. <laughs> right. Easily. And and you know, it was important to include him, and he could easily be number one just because the message of what he writes. And if you catch what he's talking about is that the inspiration to his music is love worth fighting for. And there's those relationships worth fighting for and not giving up on your dreams and on your love for other people, et cetera. And that's the message. And I just think it's super strong. And Damon Day is super talented and a great guy. And I'm glad you did that because it was a reunion of sorts for he and I. So that was just, that was a fun show. That was that a great was, show. Absolutely. No doubt. That was a lot of fun. Here's the next one. First of all, what in the world is a scrubber? You know, if I told you maritime scrubber, 
What would you think? First thing that comes to my mind <laughs> is, is just that, you know, iron made these. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so some wet shoes out there scrubbing a deck, right? Scrubbing a deck. Scrubbing a deck. That's what I think. Right? That's what I yeah. thought before I knew exactly what this thing was. Maritime <laughs> scrubbers. Well, it's not what we thought. <laughs> no, no. It, well, yeah. <laughs> it's not the first image that comes to your mind because, I mean, that, that is kind of it, right? But, yeah, that was all about, you know, you can't, we can't, re in in my opinion, that show really brought forth the the idea that you can't rely on, on all these different technologies. You have, there has to be a conglomeration of different solutions to make, to, make, to, to solve our emissions and our, our our destruction of the environment, our, our issues there is is really what I took out of that one. Because the scrubbers, all they do is really keep the carbon dioxide, the, the CO two from going into the atmosphere and dump it into the ocean. Right. Yeah, That's all they do. They take the air, dirty air, they push it down into the water, basically, and then uh, yeah. Uh, there's been studies now on the merit, uh, the marine life, the effects on seagrasses and marine life, and so forth. Yeah. We'll have more shows up on that as well, but. I better keep on moving here. Oh, next one. Going? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your biodiesel may not be vegan. You think biodiesel, you think, oh, it burns cleaner, greener. No, most people think it comes from vegetable oil vegan. You know, it says about one third of the fats and oils produced in the United States are animal fats made into high quality biodiesel that meets the ASTM specifications for biodiesel, not vegan. <laughs> not vegan. <laughs> I love what you did with that clip. Not vegan. Not vegan. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Oh my god. And and what I mean, it's not all biodiesel, but the, the point of it is is that there's a good percentage of the fats that are produced out of animals that are actually used in biodiesels. And it, and it is considered a biodiesel. So if you buy something that says biodiesel and you're a vegan, you, 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 you need to read the labels because <laughs> it may not totally. be what you think it is. <laughs> it might not be what you think it is. Exactly right. All right. Let's talk about our next one. Here we go. So it works out to be 10 to 20% net savings on fuel. Yeah. We're averaging 20% fuel economy improvement. A money back guarantee, at least 10% fuel economy improvement. You, so, you know what I mean? I mean, it's ignorant. I know because, you know, I don't have time to save millions of dollars potentially, but say, yeah, I don't have time. All right. So basically what we're asking them to do is have a driver put in the date Whatever the idea is on the truck, the odometer and the fuel, those are yeah. in. That's it right there. Now, do you want to measure DEF as well? We can do that. It's optional. A money back guarantee, at least 10% fuel economy improvement. That is an impactful thing. That is an uh, there's 30 seconds that'll change your company right there. <laughs> right. Oh man, and we're getting these case studies time and time again, Michael. As you know, we're we have 17 engines with 26.73% mile per gallon gain. That is a gain. Right. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, the 10% savings on your money back is a sucker bet because we're going to win it every time. And right. that should inspire you to actually take that bet because it's going to work. <laughs> it does work. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? It's I tried to set that one up as if you were trying to sell me and I was objecting because the only objection is an ignorant objection. Yeah, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to save millions of dollars. Sorry. Absolutely. No, it's a game changer. And we love rolling this out with fleets because it reduces emissions at combustion. It reduces your diesel exhaust fluid. It reduces your fuel consumption. And so it's cleaner, greener. And it does all these things. It removes carbon. It lubricates the engine. It's six in one. People are like, I can't believe it. I don't want to believe it. I can't believe it. And we said, fuck. Okay, we have a money back guarantee. So yeah. take us up on it. 
Yeah, amen. And you know that I was good. It was either this route or I was going to talk about you know your lubricious personality. So I, I went this way. <laughs> I do not have a lubricious personality. <laughs> But we, just that whole segment of us talking about what the heck that word means was oh, hysterical because yeah. we're just a couple of goofs like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh -oh. I mean, and that's the point. The, you, you need to understand what this stuff does because it is the secret sauce is six different things inside of this product and they're all good. It's not like the forward pass when, you know, uh, Woody Hayes said only three things can happen and only one of them's good. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, this, these, this is all good. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we're doing a bonus track. We yeah, we had to, I had to, I had to put a bonus track. In. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So here's our bonus track. You guys that hung around, here you go. So there's a wealthy businessman and then there's a farmer. And this wealthy businessman decided he really wanted to get one of those really fancy five foot wide kites with the straps on the sides and the long tails. So he goes out to this field in rural Oklahoma. He's flying it around. Okay. Uh -huh. But as kites often do, it started diving to the ground and he couldn't change the direction. So it crashed into the farmer's field. Okay. So he didn't see anybody around, so he opens the gate and walks onto the farm, and the farmer comes out and he says, is there something I can help you with? And the rich businessman said, well, you know, I went out and bought this really fancy kite. I wanted one, and, you know, it's two of the nines, and I've really wanted it for a long time. He goes, well, that's really nice. I kind of I kind of like that kite. I might want to have that. He said, and really, technically, since you're trespassing and it's on my land, I could take it, and we could go to small claims court or something. But he said, I actually have a farm rental surcharge. So you've heard of fuel surcharges, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a farm rental surcharge and it's only $200. So you spent $500 on it? He said, yeah, I'll just charge you $200 and you can have it. He said, well, that doesn't seem really that fair. The farmer said, well, then, okay, I've got another option. It's a challenge. It's a rear end kicking contest. Okay. <laughs> said the way it works. We'll each take a turn, kicking the other one in the rear end until somebody says uncle. And the guy, he said, okay. And he said, if you win, then you get to have your kite and go on your way. He said, okay, I'll take up the challenge. I'm going to do that. It's a bet. Okay. So he said, Far farmer says, I go first. So he runs back and he's been used to kicking cow chips out of the way. And he's got some pretty good strength. So he runs full speed. Kicks the businessman in the rear end. Okay. So the businessman, oh God, that hurts so much. Oh, I didn't realize that was going to be so bad. This is awful. That's the worst. He goes, I need to catch my breath. I got to catch my breath. I can't. He said, the Farmer said, Take your time. It's okay. Take your time. So the businessman says, Okay, now it's my turn. And the farmer says, You can have your time. <laughs> Oh man, I, I love got that, that joke too. off of a Johnny Carson show. I, I knew I recognized it from somewhere. It is a great, it is a, that is a great joke. I, I, love that joke. <laughs> I added a little bit of twist to it with the surcharge thing, but it, ultimately it was, uh, oh man, it was on Johnny Carson and, and it had like 20 million views or something. So I had to check it out. Yeah, no, that's 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 a tremendous. Hey, anybody out there, feel free to use that over the holidays with your family and friends. That's what that's there for. <laughs> Our gift to you. We like to be giving back, right? So you that's can impress right. your family and friends with your your humorous nature. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, Michael, it's been a whole lot of fun recording all these episodes. Amen, amen. I'm looking forward to uh, another year, man. Absolutely, we're just getting started. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you all for giving and uh, donating, getting involved in a sponsorship. You will literally change somebody's life. Uh, not only that family, but the community. It's incredible. So That's thank right. you for do doing that. And we, from my family to yours, everybody out there, you too, Michael and your family, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Absolutely. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.